Hey guys, welcome to Tech Tricks Tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to use constraints in Figma. It's a step-by-step -step guide to follow easily and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Let's dive right in. So welcome to the blank page. As you can see, I have the topic title ready. I'll be showing you guys how to use constraints in Figma. But first of all, what is frame constraint? So frame constraint allows you to fix elements of your design to different sides of their parent frame. Let me go ahead and put a parent frame here and also on the inside as well. As you can see on the right side panel of your screen, you can see the constraints and the sides are the horizontal and vertical movements of the frame. Also, a very important key is the backs which is blue lines. Those lines will be guiding the movement of your frame. Let me start with filling the frame with the color so it will not be too hard for you to tell the different movements of the frame. As I have mentioned earlier that those blue lines is really important because it's basically the one that will tell you where will your frame was taken to. So that will be your guide on how you can move your frames. If we look closely into this, you can see those blue lines around the frames. For now, it is set at the left and top part of the frames because it is set at the top and left constraints. And if you change the horizontal tag to the right, the line on the left will move on to the right side as well. If you move the frames with a left and top constraint, it should look like this. It will always keep the coordinate side of the left and top part of the frame. Now moving on to the right and top part, you will now see the difference because this will do the opposite and will keep the coordinates on the right and top part of the frame. As you keep track of the coordinates, you can tell that it will not change on the right and top part of the frame. As what I am showing here that when I made it bigger or smaller, the coordinates on the right and top part will always be the same number. That's how helpful the constraints are. On into the next one which is the center constraint. So for me to make it easier for you guys to understand, let me put this in the center of the parent frame as well. No matter what movements you make with this behavior, it will always stay in the center of the parent frame. Let me move it to the top and see if the frame will still be on the center part. And it stayed. With this behavior specifically, you can really make something out of it. The next constraint that we will do is the scale. The scale is a bit confusing but when you set it up scale under frame constraints, it's just scaling with a frame. As you can see, the coordinates will get higher if you make the frame bigger. Basically, if you make your parent frame twice as big as before, the frame inside will double its size as well. You have a lot of options here. You can also pair it with top or bottom scale that will just depend on you on how you're going to use it in your project. Now that we are done with the other constraints that I demonstrated, we are now left with just two constraints which are the left and right and top and bottom constraints. If you pair these two together, it will maintain the coordinates on each margin of the frame. Website designers use this a lot so they can view their project on a bigger picture or how it would look in a smaller picture. As you pay attention to the coordinates and you change the tag to left and right tag, what will happen is that it will maintain the coordinate of the left and right side margin because the behavior of this constraint is like it is synced or glued to the parent frame. Let me show you on how the frame will stick and maintain the coordinates as we make the parent frame bigger. If you take a look at the coordinates on how the side is maintained, no matter how small or big you want to change the parent frame, the sides are well maintained and there will be no change to the margin. For me, this constraint is really helpful if you just want to balance out your design. Here's another example. If you tie the vertical constraint to top and bottom, you will now maintain the coordinates of the whole frame. Since it is tagged to left, right, bottom, and top constraints, Figma basically said that if you combine the four constraints, it will maintain coordinates on each side of the frame. As I will make the parent frame bigger, you can tell that the margin are maintained and didn't move any little because we have it unlocked using these constraints. Before we make a sample design, allow me to show you guys the different behavior of the left and right constraint and scale constraint. Just to let you see the key points of these two because a lot of users thought that these two has just similar behavior, but let me break it down to you, the different behavior of these two. Let me tag the top one to left and right constraint, and the bottom I will be tagging it with a scale constraint. For me to differentiate the behavior of this constraint, as you can see as I will make the parent frame bigger, you can tell that the top box is maintaining its coordinates on its left and right side margins, while the bottom one had some resizing happen, so that's the key point that I was talking about, because a lot of users are confused about the two. But if you change the bottom to left and right constraint, they will now have the same movement and maintain the left and right side margins of each side. Now that I have shown you the different constraints here in Figma, why don't we make a sample project to see if constraints are really helpful in making a project. So first things first, you will have the parent frame. 
Let's say we'll make a website design, but we will just make it simple this time. So on our website, we have a header that will be our first frame. And we always want our header to keep the margin on its left and right side. So you know what to do, just tag the horizontal constraint to left and right. And the vertical movement, tag it with the top so it doesn't move towards bottom. Now let's try to move the parent frame and see if our header will stay on top and maintain its coordinates on left and right side. So as you can see, it's perfect that it did its job, it maintained the margin on the left and right side, and on top of that, it stayed at the top part of the frame. So moving on to the next frame, let's have a website logo, and we want to keep it on the left top of the parent frame. So all you have to do is tag the constraint to top and left, and that way it will stay on the top left of the frame. Now let's try to move the parent frame and see if the logo will stay on the top left part of the frame. So this is good, it worked the way how we wanted it to work. So moving on into the next frame, let's add another on the top right corner. Let's say the website will have a login button on the top right corner and just repeat the constraints you will have to tag right and top. That way it will stay on the top right corner of your project. Let's try to move the parent frame and see if it will do its job. As you can see, it is glued in the top right corner, so we can tell that we have the constraints right. Next thing that we can do is add some backgrounds to our website. Let me put a background here on the left side and fill it with a dark red color so it will be easier for you guys to see. What we can do also is copy this frame and put it on the other side so we can have a balanced background. And so for the constraints on this frame, for the horizontal constraint, you will have to tag left on the left background so that it will stay on the left side part of our project. That goes on the right background as well, just tag it to right so it will stick to the right side part of the screen. And for the vertical constraint, for both left and right, we will have the scale, so when we move our parent frame, we will always have a scale background that balance out while we edit the parent frame on how big or small we want our project to be. You can see that it is moving nicely, it is nice and synced together with a parent frame, the logo stayed on the top left part of the project. Also, you can add more designs just like if you want to put something here on the center. You can do that as well, just don't forget to tag the constraint on center so that it will nicely set at the center part of your project when you edit your project. So when you move the parent frame, it should look like this, nice and sync. It will organize the margins and coordinates, the positions as well. Unlike when you don't use constraint, just like this one here, you remove all the constraint or you don't know how to tag the constraints well, then it's gonna look like this if we try to move the parent frame. And we don't want that because that's too much of a headache and it's not properly coordinated. So that's basically how you use constraints in Figma and I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.